Well, good morning. Welcome to City Walk, Yuba City. Why don't you stand with us and let's sing and worship together. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I tried with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. But to believe my doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friend Burden and bitterness You can't just keep it moving Oh, yeah, welcome here Now till I walk the streets of gold our story. There was another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. There was another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. There was another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. There was another one. I think the Savior, because he healed my heart, changed my name, forever free. I'm not the same. I think the Master, I think the Savior, I think God, yeah. Sing the song of ages to the Lamb. 
You invite me to the table to fill my cup again. Oh, to be here with the Savior. Be welcome as a friend. 
Body broken, arms open as you hung there on tree through the suffering, through the crushing.
touches me. What a says to you we praise you God for who you are and for what you've done for you've done in our, in our lives and, in, and really God for the whole world such a great and glorious love that God we can't even imagine what it is to to love and to care for someone so much to give up everything for their salvation it really is marvelous. It really is wonderful. And we know, God, that we are not worthy. But you did it anyway. Thank you. God, as we worship today, we put you at the forefront of our minds. And we just pray, God, that you would speak to us, speak to our hearts. Help us to draw closer to you learn more about who you are and how awesome you really are, God. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Hey, good morning, City Walk. If we've not got the pleasure to meet, my name is Virgil. And, you know, one of the things that, that we love here is getting connected with folks. And if you are a first-time guest here, we would love to get connected with you. And the easiest way to do that is a couple of different ways. One, if you're here, there's a card in front of you that says connected. And if you could fill that out, and we just ask for basic information, and really what we want to do is, is get to know you a little bit better and see how us as CityWalk can help plug in and help your life. And so if you could please fill this out, and then if you take it to the next steps table out there in the lobby, uh, we will trade this for a $5 Dutch Bros gift card. Now, if you're watching online, or if you prefer to do it online, downloading our app is not only a great way to do this, you will find this same card on there, but it's a great way to hear our announcements, what we got going on, especially city groups. In fact, we just launched city groups this past Sunday, but it's not too late. And so if you get on the app, you can look and see what all we have going on. Either way, if you tell us whether you filled this out online or if you bring the card up, we will trade this for that $5 Dutch Bros gift card. And each one of those cards that we get, we also make a donation to an organization called A Woman's Friend here in town. But what if they call City Walk Home? Yes, yeah, so if you call City Walk Home, this is the time where we transition to our worship through giving. You can give in a couple of ways. You can give online or you can give at that offering box out in the lobby. Your giving allows us to do all the things we do here, including what we all did this past week. We were at sports camp here in Yuba City and in Edgewater. I was there, it was an awesome week. We had so much fun, but it was more than just fun. Over 200 kids were presented with the gospel between both camps. And we don't just wanna tell you about this week that was so special, but we wanna give you a little taste. So I think we have a video here of a recap of sports camp.
so much fun while Annalise is here. She got learned so many skills. I'm so excited for her. My daughter had a blast. You guys, the effort that this team put out was amazing. We really appreciate you guys. Morning, City Walk. How are we? Yeah, we had a really, really good week. Thank you so many of you. You brought your kids. Uh, many of you served. Many of you prayed. And uh, we had a really good week at both Edgewater and Yuba City and uh, are looking forward to next year. We're also looking forward to this next week. We're going to be doing a three-day sports camp in a small town called Willows, California, about an hour from here. And so uh, we're looking forward to kind of running it back for three days there and ministering to some families in a, in a new community for us. And so thank you again. It was a really, really special week. And uh, if you served at camp, maybe you're dragging a little bit. So you may want to pop, you know, oh, wow, I uh, hit my microphone there. You may want to wake yourself up. We got Kona ice afterwards, free Kona ice. So we're going to refill you all with sugar. Uh, so that you're ready to go. And if we have 50 kids, and I kind of hope we have 48 or 49 in our city kids, when I'm done here, I have to walk outside and get slimed. And so I'm praying that while I'm preaching that only about 48, 49 kids get here. Uh, but I, I've got my poncho ready. So, uh, But it was a good week, and we're going to have a great day today. And so thank you for your part in that. Uh, this week, while I was uh, on, I was on Facebook a couple times this week, and, and as I was on Facebook, one of my favorite parts, and probably my favorite part of social media at all, is looking back at memories. And so as we were putting on sports camp this week here, uh, it was cool to look back at some of my memories and seeing some of the same uh, sports camps that we did a few years ago, and just remembering what it was like, and, and I love social media for that. There's a lot of things I don't love about social media, but I love looking back and seeing, you know, now 13, 14 years since I've used Facebook to be able to look back at some of the memories and things that I forgot about, and it's just kind of cool to look back at some of those things, and, and I imagine you're the same way, that uh, you, you look back and maybe it's uh, two years ago, maybe it's five years ago, seven years ago, and, and as you're looking back at some of your memories, whether it's on social media or looking back at uh, pictures on your phone or photo albums, man, there's a lot of times that we get a chance to do that, that man, it reminds us of some really good things, and it really makes us smile, and we're excited about the things we remember. But then there's probably, if you're like me, there's some memories that I look back on, and, and though a lot of them are memories I look back on, and they're, they're fond memories and things I remember being great, there's also some things that I look back on and that I'm reminded of, man, that aren't as good. They're, they're not memories that I smile at. They're not memories that I celebrate. And, and I would guess that maybe you have some of those yourself. As you look back, and, and though there's a lot of things you look back on, and it makes you smile, and it gives you hope, and it reminds you of a special time, there's probably also things in your past, like mine, that, man, you're, you're, you're not proud of. That when you look back on, you kind of find yourself wanting to, to not remember, and to kind of move past some things, and, and sometimes that's easier said than done. It's easier said than done to, to move forward past some of the things maybe from a few years ago or a few seasons ago that we look back on in our life and we remember or we're reminded of. We go to that place, we see that person, we see that picture, and it reminds us of something that we don't really want to remember. And it reminds us of something that we're kind of trying to get away from and we're trying to gain victory over and we're trying to not allow it to rent space in our head or in our life anymore. But yet sometimes that's easier said than done. And, and over the past few weeks, we've been reading a, a letter that a guy by the name of Paul wrote to some friends of his that he knew very well in a city called Ephesus. 
And, and if anybody understood what it was like to have to get past some things in his past that he wasn't proud of and that really didn't bring him joy, it was Paul. Because Paul was a guy that as he writes to these people and in the city of Ephesus, Paul was a guy that, man, as he looked back at his life, there were some things in his life that he was probably ashamed of. There were some things in his life that, man, if he remembered them, it probably made him lose sleep. There were some things that, man, kind of hurt on the inside as he thought back at some things and some ways that he had treated people. And, and, And I'm sure Paul was, man, just like us. And he grappled with things. He, he wasn't, we read, sometimes we read in the scriptures and we, we put these people up on a pedestal like they're these superstars that don't really feel the way we feel. But yet Paul was a guy that grappled with a past. He grappled with some things that he wasn't proud of, some things he was probably ashamed of in his past. And he's writing to a group of people that are living in a city where they are constantly being bombarded with things that are vying for their allegiance and their worship. He's writing to people in this city that have, even in their past, sought fulfillment in some things that really didn't bring fulfillment. And so he's writing as a guy that has a past, that that has some struggles, and, and he's also writing to some people that have some struggles and have some things in their past that they're not proud of. And so, see, we have these special lights to keep you guys awake. I told you. I told you. A long week, and so we're just trying to keep you on your toes. So, So Paul, and Paul is like a spiritual father to these people. So he's writing to these people, and he's wanting to help them think through what to do with their past. Is something that he had to do on his own. And so I, as you sit here this morning, maybe you're watching online. Every single one of us has things in our life as we look back, just like the people that Paul was writing to, that man, we're not proud of. But because of Jesus, we have the opportunity to move past them and have victory. And as Paul was writing to these people, these are people that he didn't know as just an acquaintance. These are people that he knew deeply and loved dearly. He had spent years of his life with them. And so he writes to them, and and how he starts this section is he reminds them briefly of what the past looked like for them. So so look with me at at Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to start in verse 17, and this is kind of the people in Ephesus looking back at their Facebook memories and remembering some things that, man, they they aren't proud of, some things that they don't celebrate. And Paul reminds them of what life was like in the past. He says this. He says in verse 17, he says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of of their minds. And so as he starts, he's, he's, he's starting to, like I said, he's going to get into talking to them about how they used to live. And, and that word walk, when it's in the scriptures, it basically means how you live. And so he's saying, all right, man, there's the Gentiles was kind of a, a word that they used to talk about people that, that weren't good. And so he's, he's reminding them, he's starting to remind them of, hey, that how you used to walk, how you used to live. And, and he uses this word futility. And, and maybe you would understand this as, as you, uh, we've all probably felt this, but, but the word you, uh, futility, it simply means this, it means purposelessness. And so he's saying, hey, some of you, and he's going to get into it, you the way you walked, the way you lived, you used to live kind of aimlessly. You kind of walked through life without purpose. And he, he unpacks it a little bit further. He explains more. He says this. In verse 18, he says, They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. And so what Paul's saying, he's saying, Hey, but before... You, you knew Jesus, you were wandering through life, 
Your, your heart was hard. Your, your, your heart and your eyes were dark. And, and man, you were kind of going through life and you were going through life aimlessly and purposelessness. There was purposelessness in you. And, and man, it was, it was, you were kind of close to the things of what God wanted to do and his plan for your life. See, you didn't know the author of life, and so you didn't understand his plan for you. And, and maybe you can relate as you think about this. Maybe you, you, maybe you grew up in church. Maybe you're here and you're kind of investigating faith. You're not sure what you even believe, and maybe you're watching online. And, and as you think about life, you remember a time like this. Maybe you would say, I kind of feel like I'm in this time now, Chris, where I'm kind of wandering through life, and it's, it's kind of dark, and, and man, there's, there's not a lot of purpose, and there's not a lot of aim, and, and I just feel directionless. And Paul is telling them, man, this is kind of how life was for you. And, and he goes on, and he explains it a little bit more in verse 19, and he says this. He says, they have become callous, so, so past feeling, not able to feel insensitive and have given themselves up to sensuality greedy to practice every kind of impurity and so what he's saying he's saying you remember that time in your life when you were kind of just walking through life and it was dark and you were so calloused that you didn't even feel the pain Man, you were, you were walking through life, and it was dark, and it was, there was not purpose, and, and there was not aim, and you were just kind of running into stuff, and you couldn't even feel it because of kind of the callousness that was on your heart. You, you, there wasn't a lot of light in your life. And, and he, he's, Paul remembers, in, in, even in his own life, he remembers what it was like before Jesus, and, and he remembers... He was a man that was, had a lot of purpose, but his purpose was going the way wrong direction. And so he remembers this, and he's reminding them of this. But then he says, and then he says a phrase that kind of turns the conversation. After he reminds them of, of what they felt and what, how they were living, he says this, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. Basically what Paul says, but the light, it's turned on now. You, you, were, you were going through life and it was dark and there was aimlessness and, and you were calloused. And, and, and man, you didn't know the author of life and so you didn't understand his plan. But, but now the light has been turned on. You, you now, now you do know Jesus. You, you know truth. You know that you can have peace and purpose in life. Things have changed. In another letter that Paul wrote to some friends of his in the city of Corinth, he, he kind of said it this way. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, not if anyone knows who Christ is, but he's saying, if, if anyone has a personal relationship with Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. He says, hey, those of you that are in Christ, not you go to church, not you give money to good things, not your grandpa was a pastor, not, not any of these things, but, but those of you that have a personal relationship with Christ, he, he says, something happened to you. The light turned on, and he says that you're a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And what Paul does in the, in the next few verses is he practically talks that out with these people in Ephesus because if you're a follower of Christ this is probably not new information to you you're like, yeah you've heard that you've maybe seen that on a coffee cup somewhere on a pillow on a poster and, and so that's not a new idea but but what does this actually practically like look at like when we live it out in Yuba City California 
in 2024 when it's 100 and whatever degrees and you just want to fight somebody because it's so hot? Like, how do you actually live out being new on the inside? Because, oh, yeah, yeah, I do remember. I remember, Paul, what it was like before I met Jesus. I, I remember the, the callousness and not even being able to feel pain. And I remember the, the lack of purpose. I, I remember that. And then maybe you would say, I, I remember when kind of the light was turned on and things changed. And I did realize that there was purpose and there was aim and there was peace available. But how does that, how does that practically play out? And Paul, what he does is he talks it out a little bit with us. He says this in verse 22 of Ephesians. He says, he says to put off your old self, lay aside. That, that, that idea of put off is kind of set it aside, lay aside. Your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life. He's saying those old clothes... That old smell, that, that, that old self, that, that belongs to your old person. And so you're, there's no reason that you would continue to wear that. So you're going to put that off. You're going to lay that aside because you're a new person now. And so you're going to lay it aside. He says, and it's corrupt through deceitful desires. That, that old self, those dirty clothes, I remember as a kid, I grew up with three, I was the oldest of three boys. And there was a season of our life, and this was the greatest season for a little boy. We lived in the middle of the woods. So we, we lived in this little small house in the middle of the woods, and we rented it from a, another family. And so, man, we had just acres and acres of woods. And so, man, we were boys. So, we, man, we ran around there, and, man, we got into everything. We were muddy. Shoes were not, I mean, we didn't know where our shoes were ever. So we were outside all the time, no shoes, barely any clothes probably, uh, just enough to kind of be legal and, and just running around playing. And, and we would get, there were times that we would get so dirty that my mom would just meet us at the front door, and she'd say, yeah, you're not coming inside looking like that. In fact, you can just take all your clothes off and leave them here, and there's a hose. And before you even come inside, you, you got to get all that off you because you're just not walking in my house like that. And so, again, we're out in the middle of the woods. We didn't care, so we, we would do that. Then we would go in, and obviously, man, we would take showers and get cleaned up, and, and it would be really weird if after that whole process of mom saying, you're not coming in the house until all that mud and dirt and those clothes that you've been wearing for three days, like all that has to come off, you leave it right here. Then you go in and man, you take a shower and usually it was after one shower, you'd get out and mom be like, did you even take a shower? Go back in there and get cleaned up. And you know, you finally get all cleaned up. And then how absurd would it be to walk right back outside to those clothes and put them all back on? First of all, my mom would have killed us. I wouldn't be here today. Uh, but obviously, that'd, that'd be absurd. It would be absurd to go through that, the part of taking it off and, and getting it all put away, going in and getting totally cleaned up, and then to just walk right back out there and to put those dirty clothes back on would be absurd, but yet that's what we are tempted to do if you're a follower of Christ. And, and Paul understood this. He understood that, man, there's this very important thing that as a follower of Jesus, a, a, an important part of walking out your newness is you have to actively put off things that are focused on who you used to be. Put them off. You don't need those anymore. But if you're honest and and in my life, I feel the same way, there's certain times that you look over at those really dirty, nasty clothes, and you're tempted to put them back on. You're, you're tempted to, man, that shirt, actually, it, it actually looks okay. And, and you're tempted to, to put it on. But Paul says, hey, I want you to start by putting those things off. But he doesn't stop there. 
he says, I want you to be renewed, this idea of renovated in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. I want you to, yes, I want you to put off, you got to take off the dirty stuff, take off the stuff that it no longer fits who you are because you're new, but don't stop there. Then you have to renovate, renew your mind with truth. And then once you renovate your mind with God's truth, then what we do is we begin to put on some new things. And and, and if you watch any kind of TV, you know this. There are whole channels dedicated to this process with houses and yards. It's when we're on vacation. They're, my mom and dad, they live in Birmingham, Alabama. And they, and they watch, they love these shows. And so we watch them from time to time when we're, you know, here in California. But it's not like our family show is not to, like, put these on. But when we go there, it's like they have a couple favorite ones that they really like. And so we'll binge watch like Tammy and John just renovating all these houses and, and, and there's whole channels dedicated to this process. And, and, and if you've watched these, and I know you have, like you, you watch, a, you know, somebody goes into a home or a yard that's pretty trashed, doesn't look good, that's really outdated. And they go in and the first thing they do is they get, get out all the old. They take out all the weeds from the yard. They, they put off. They remove it. But they don't stop there. Then before they put new stuff in, they go in and they fix it. They renovate it. They, they do what they need to do so that the house is sound. And then Joanna comes in after Chip's done all that. And makes it look really pretty. And, and makes it look amazing and fresh and beautiful with all the new things. And, and every part of that process is important. Like you can't leave part of that process out. You, you can't leave the part of taking out the old. You, you can't leave the part of renovating and, and making the house sound. And, and then you wouldn't want to forget about also putting in all the new stuff. All of that is vital to the process. And it's the same way, spiritually, and it's what Paul is saying. See, you and I, we were, we were beat up. We were purposeless. We had no ability to fix ourselves. And God drew us into a relationship with Jesus so that we are now new. We're empowered to no longer live the way we used to. Instead of living that way, we are to put off. The old were to renew with truth, and then were to put on. And just like in a house that's being remodeled and a new family's going in, like every part of this process is important, and we can't leave any out. A, a lot of times, honestly, the church world is really good and passionate about the put-off part. Like, we can flat out tell you what you're not supposed to do. Like, we can give you a list, and we're really good at it. And in fact, it might be why some of you walked away from the church for a season, because it's like, man, I, can, I can't keep up with all the lists and all the things I'm not supposed to do, and, and it's just, it gets confusing. But, man, we in the church world have kind of gotten ourselves into it where we are really good at telling people what not to do, telling people what not to, who not to vote for, what to not believe, where to not go. Like, we can tell you that with clarity. But sometimes we're really, really weak at the other two sections the other two vital things if someone's really going to walk in the newness that they are and and, and they, like i said maybe that's you maybe you've maybe you've done the church thing before and all you ever heard about was what the church was against and the list of things you weren't supposed to do and so for you, you just thought, you know what, I'm not perfect, so why would I hang around people who think they are? 
And, and, and here's the dirty secret. A life like that is a life where people don't walk in victory. Their walk with God becomes a cycle of working hard to stop things, failing and falling back into them, asking God for forgiveness and working even harder. And it's just a vicious cycle. See, if all you're doing is stopping, it is only a matter of time before you start again. If all you're doing is saying, you know what, these are the things I'm going to work really, really hard to never do, to never think, to never go to those places, and if that's all your focus is, it's only a matter of time before you're going to do some of those things that you said, I can't do those, if that's all there is to the process. And what Paul says is, hey, that's part of the process. The putting off is, yeah, there's some things that you definitely need to put off. They aren't God's best. They will hurt you. And so, yes, there's a put off, but there's also a renew your mind with truth and then put on some stuff. And what Paul does is he kind of closes out this section by giving us some just very clear examples of how this kind of plays out. Look with me at verse 25. He says, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. He says, hey, it's, it's not enough to just stop lying. I want you to actually actively talk about truth. I want you to actively speak truth. Then he goes on in verse 28, and he says, hey, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. And so Paul does say, yeah, you should probably stop stealing. Yeah, you should put that off. That would be a really good idea. But, but don't stop with just stopping stealing. What I want you to actually do is I want you to stop stealing. Then I want you to begin really working hard and being generous, sharing with those who have need. He goes on in verse 29, and he says this. Let no, and this is where we think he means some right here. He's like, I, I think he probably the Greek for no is some, but it's not. He says, let no... Not even a little bit, not even if it's 112 outside, not even if you had a bad day at work, not even if you were in traffic, not, not, there's no excuse, there's no like, except for this time, he says, let no corrupt. So what's the word corrupt or corrupting? What's that mean? Worthless, unwholesome. It's how they would describe rotten food. He says, I don't want any, let no corrupt, rotten, worthless, unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up. Only, only words that are good and would actually benefit other people, building others up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So again, Paul says, hey, stop the rotten, unwholesome, manipulative communication and instead speak things that benefit or build up or are gracious to people. Stop, but start. And then he finishes with this, this section that you probably have heard some of these kind of phrases even if you didn't grow up in church you probably have heard this he says this let all bitterness and again we, we again we think he means some a little bit but he says no, no let all bitterness and what bitterness is it's hostility that comes from unresolved conflict and unforgiveness he says let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor it's like paul can you leave one out? Give me a little bit of a, a little, little bit of easiness here. And clamor and slander, let it be put away from you. Take it off, along with all malice. And then verse 32. 
be kind to one another. Tenderhearted, that idea of compassionate, forgiving one another. And then he drops the mic with this last phrase. You only have to forgive people the way you have been forgiven. You're like, could you have left that out, Paul? Could you have left that last? He, he, he says, hey, you, you just have to do it kind of the same way it's been done for you. The way Jesus forgave you. That, that, that's the way I want you to forgive other people. And so Paul, as he's writing, and again, he's, this isn't just a letter that he's writing to people he doesn't know. These are people he loves dearly. People he has spent time with. People he wants to see be successful in their life and in their walk with God. And he says, guys, your life before Jesus, man, there was, there was a lot of, men aimlessness, a lot of darkness. There was a lot of callousness, and it was, it was tough, man. And, and probably as you sit there today, if, if you have, are a follower of Jesus, and even if you kind of began a, became a follower of Jesus later in life, you probably can clearly remember some of that in your own life. And Paul knew these people, and so he said, man, remember how it was, and man, but that's not the way it is anymore. The light has been turned on. And so I want you to act as if the light has been turned on, because you're a new creation on the inside, and, and, and in order to really walk that out, it's, it's putting off, and it's renewing your mind, and it's putting on. And whether you're, you know, you may be watching online or you're here with us this morning, whether you're new to faith, maybe you're not sure what you believe, or, or maybe you have been following Jesus for a long time, you may be able to relate with maybe some of these people that Paul is writing to, because at times life maybe feels this way. It feels like you're walking around and it's a little bit dark, not able to make progress, Maybe you're struggling with some regrets from the past. There are some maybe habits in your life that, man, you just continue to almost fall back into. And there's some shame that you feel because of it. And it's not supposed to be that way. Because of Jesus and the reality of him living in and through you, you and I can walk in victory. You can live without guilt without regret you can find freedom you can have purpose in your life but it but it, it doesn't happen if you just work hard you just hey I'm just gonna really work hard to stay away from destructive things obviously that's a good thing that's part of the puzzle yeah man you you, you want to stay away and put off some things and, and make sure that, man, things that are destructive and that aren't God's best, that, man, you, you take those things off and you avoid those, of course. But we got to do the rest. We got to be willing to put off, but then to renovate our mind with the truth and then to begin putting on. And if you grew up in a system that was very focused on only one part of it, you probably got exhausted in that process because it is exhausted if it is exhausting if all you do is you wake up every day and really work hard at not doing things in your own power because you were never supposed to do it in your own power and so let me ask you some questions just as we close and if if you're a follower of Jesus maybe you're investigating faith maybe you're watching online these are all questions that are kind of personal questions that you can just grapple with between you and God. So, so here's the first question. It's, it's the part that, again, we, we do pretty well in the church world. But it is a good question. What do you need to put off? Like, is there some things, as even we've been talking and maybe the Holy Spirit has kind of pricked your heart, or maybe you're listening to this later or watching this online and and is there some things in your life that, that you just know, they're just not healthy? They're not God's best. Uh, you, you know that, man, when you're involved in them, it, it doesn't lead to good things. And, and, and no one has to tell you that. You just, 
you know that. And there's, there's some habits. There's some things in your life that, that you maybe just know that they're just not going to help you walk in intimacy with Jesus. And so is there anything just in your own life? Is there something that maybe God is pricking your heart about? And here's the second question. What lie are you believing that needs to be replaced with truth? Because usually when we choose God's best, it, or we choose to do something that's not God's best, it's because we're believing a lie. We're believing that, yes, God, I, I know you said this, and I know it seems like that seems to work out, but, but God, I, I think in my situation, I think it would be better to go this way. I know that's not what you say. In fact, you say that's not healthy for me, but, but God, you don't totally know my situation, so I'm going to kind of go this way, and, and, and we kind of begin to believe a lie. And so part of this process is finding out what lie am I believing? And replacing that lie with the truth, renewing our mind. And here's the thing, renewing your mind, we have to have truth to renew our mind, not good intentions and good vibes. Like like we're not going to renew our mind with good vibes, we need truth. And, And so... As, as we're thinking about, hey, God, I've, I've been believing some lies that have led me to do things and go places that aren't your best. And so, God, I need to replace. It's not enough to just stop doing them. I need to replace those lies with truth from your word. And it's that truth that's going to renovate my mind. And then the last thing. Last question, then what do you need to put on? Then we're going to put off some things. We're going to identify those lies, and we're going to renew, and we're going to renovate our mind with truth. We're going to be in the scriptures and renew our mind. But just doing those two things, we, we got to put on some things. we got to put on action. Paul gave us the example of a, a thief, and he says, yeah, stop stealing But then what I want you to do is I actually want you to start working hard and being generous. Giving to people that have needs. See, the process of putting off and renewing our minds and putting on is a process that Paul didn't just talk about. It was something that he had to live out. Because again, he had some stuff in his past that uh, made him struggle. And this process is... Not a process, and I I hope you don't think this, that you ever graduate from. It's not like once you've been following Jesus for four decades, you don't have to do this anymore. To the last day that you're on earth, you're still going to be putting off and renewing your mind with truth and putting on. And it's a a process that really never ends. This week, I, I loved sports camp for a lot of reasons but one of the best parts about sports camp for me is I love the opportunity to just we we get a lot of times to talk to each other because we're all serving together and you know there's there's some down times and and sitting to some of the different roles and so just to to get a chance to talk to people and I I know for me I got a chance to talk to several people who shared a little bit about their stories And I love hearing about how this exact process is really happening in people's lives. How, hey, my my life was this way, and man, there were some struggles, and there's some past, and there's some things that, man, not not real proud of, but but man, I'm I'm not dwelling there anymore. I'm not not that's not gonna have victory anymore. And to, to hear some of you talk to me about how you're doing this exact thing. You're you're putting off and you're renewing your mind. You're getting into God's word. You're getting around people in a small group that encourage you and and how you're putting your faith into action. It's a beautiful thing to watch this play out. And if you have a relationship with Jesus, you are made new on the inside. No matter what your past is, No matter what lies the evil one is telling you, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you are new on the inside. 
And until he returns and we begin eternity with him in heaven, we're going to live in an imperfect and a broken world. And in order for us to walk in victory, just as Paul was writing, in order for us to, and that is a good song for this point. <laughs> that, that, we had that plan too. Uh, in order for us to walk in victory, it's, it's not going to be good intentions. It's going to be because we decided even in a broken world where the enemy is lying to us and trying to push us back into our past, we're going to decide to, you know what? No. I'm going to obey the scriptures and I am going to actively put off those old, dirty clothes. And I'm going to leave them on the front porch. I'm not going to go back and put them on later. Because I don't need them. It's not who I am. And instead of putting those back on, I'm actually going to renovate my mind, not with just good intentions, but with the truth of God's word. And then I'm going to start to put on some fresh and new things that God puts in my life. And if you're 10 years old, or if you're 110 years old, this is for you and it's for me. And it's really what will help you live out who you really are. Let's pray. Lord, as we close this, this time in our service, we're thankful. We're thankful for your word and, and Lord, thankful for this truth. First of all, God, we're thankful for grace. Lord, we all have things in our past that, man, we're, we're not a proud of and man there are things that if we could go back we would change but God because of your grace and your love and what Jesus did for us on the cross we can leave those things in the past and God I pray that we would listen to the scriptures and that we would be people that put off put on and renew our minds with truth with every head bowed and every eye closed, you, you might be here or you may be watching online. Maybe you are a follower of Jesus. Maybe there's been a time in your life where you have just admitted to God that you don't have it all together, that you've sinned, you've done things your way. You believed that Jesus came and died on the cross and rose from the grave for you and you put your faith in him and he made you new on the inside. Maybe that happened to you last week. Or maybe that was something that's been a few decades since you started a relationship with Jesus. But no matter where you are in your faith, no matter when you became a follower of Jesus, as you think about this process, is there something that maybe the Holy Spirit has kind of pricked your heart on that you do need to put off it's something that maybe a lot of people know about maybe it's something that only you know about and you know it's just it's just not helpful it's not helping you walk out who you really are in Jesus and so maybe in this moment you would just tell God that you would just tell God God I I've been going against you in this area, and I just want to ask for your forgiveness. I want to turn from that. And then maybe this week, you just take some time to get into the scriptures and renovate your mind with some truth. You're putting off some things, but you're, you're going to spend some time to renovate your mind with truth. And then just listen to what the Holy Spirit says and as he leads you to put on and to act out in a different way. Would you just be sensitive to that? Maybe you're here and, and you're not a follower of Jesus. Maybe you're watching online and, and for you, you've been kind of grappling with all this stuff, but you've been kind of having to do it by yourself. And it's been tough. Well, this morning, I'm here to tell you that Jesus wants a relationship with you. It really does. He, 
he went to great lengths to have a relationship with you. And, and there's so many great parts of having a relationship with Jesus. But one of those parts is that he helps you in this process. He helps you put off and put on and renew your mind. And that, that all starts with just starting a relationship with him. And so maybe you're here this morning and you would say, Chris, I, I need to do that. I've, I've never started a relationship with Jesus. How do I do that? Well, just you can just do that right where you're seated. Just between you and God, you can just tell God that. Just from your heart to God. We call that praying. When we tell God what we believe in our mind and heart, we're just praying. We're talking to God. And so just in the quietness of this room or wherever you're watching this, if, if today's the day that you want to start a relationship with Jesus, maybe just say something like this. Just tell him, God, I admit to you I've sinned. I've done things my way. Just tell him, just between you and God. Then just tell him, God, I, I believe. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave for me. I believe that. And then just ask, God, I want a relationship with you. I, I want, Jesus, I, I want you to be in my life. Would you save me now? Just tell him. Put it in your own words. And if you did that, the scriptures, not me, says that the moment that we do that, the moment that we cross over that line of faith, we become new on the inside. And so if you're here this morning or you're watching online and this morning you made that decision, would you let us know? And you can let us know if you're here by just filling out that little decision card that's right in front of you. You can fill it out during the last song. If you're watching online, you can go to citywalk.cc and that card's there. We just would love to know about it. We've got some Bibles we here if you're here with us that we'd love to give you if you'll bring that card to the next steps table we'd just love to know about your decision Lord I thank you for the truth of your word I pray God that we would not just be hearers of it but that we would be doers in Jesus name amen amen would you stand with us So thankful I was reading uh, a little bit um, this morning of uh, Psalm 118. And part of that psalm just says all these different kind of scenarios part of it and, and through all of those things, through these negative situations and positive things, his love endures forever. And we've talked about that a couple months ago in the psalms it talks about that, but I love that through the good times and the bad times, through the times that we're doing really well, to the times that we're like we're putting off more than we feel like we're putting on kind of thing, that God's love endures forever. God's love is not based on our performance. It's not based on how we feel. It's not based on our emotions or our situations. It is this, the most steadfast thing we can count on in life ever. God's love is there. And God loves us infinitely. And we say it all the time, but we'll say it again and again. And, and why we worship God and, and, and talk about Jesus and his life change that he does in our hearts is because God sent Jesus for us, his only son. It's awesome love. And he died on a cross and rose again that we could have life and we can know today that we can have the righteousness of Jesus and that love. So maybe you're here today and, and you, you walked in and you're kind of just struggling with, with just life and, and stuff and you're just like, man, I'm just hoping I get something today. God loves you and he's enough. You don't have to work hard for God to love you. He's enough. Run into his arms, and he'll take care of those things that you're, you're struggling with. It may not be easy, but he's there. So as we sing, I want to invite you 
to let it go. Let God in. Talk to him in this time. Pray. That's what we call prayer, right? Talk to him. Tell him where you're struggling. Tell him where things are going so well. Offer your life and say, God, this is it. This is what I can offer. Help me. And maybe you need some, some extra help or you want someone to pray with you. Susan's down front. Would love to spend some time with you, pray with you, talk with you. You're welcome to come down front and pray and as we sing this song together. Let's worship. There's a moment when the lights went out And death has claimed its victory The king of love has given up his life The darkest day in history They're on a cross and made for sin for every curse is blood atoned The final breath in it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn what a sacrifice was made as the heavens rolled.
church. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Savior of the world. Oh, Y'all can be seated. Hey, quick update before we let you guys go. We do have a couple of announcements, but Chris did get slimed, so you may want to watch the high fives or whatever when you see him outside. But um, speaking of, of our students getting involved, uh, last week be, or this past week, because of sports camp, we did not have midweek. It will start back up this Wednesday. So for our city kids and our city students, uh, we look forward to seeing you guys Wednesday night. Um, what else is going on for our, for our folks? Yeah, and on Friday night for young adults, we have our next worship night. We've done a lot of cool, fun things this summer with young adults. But our first two worship nights, I think, might have been two of our best nights, and I'm really excited for that. So that'll be this Friday night. All the time, the address, all the details will be in the CityWalk Church app. And you mentioned worship. Yeah, I did. Tonight is worship night. So... Both campuses are going to gather together here at 6.30 for a worship night. So, right, let's get jazzed up L about that Luke's a little bit. Luke's excited uh, about that. Right. This guy's excited about it, too. He is, right? Um, but not only are we going to have worship night, but bring your favorite dessert, because what better way than worship the Lord through your voice and then filling your belly with sweet stuff, right? So y Yes, uh, dessert come, potluck afterward. That's right. So 6.30 tonight, come out for that. But... You know, when I was pulling into church today, I, I noticed all the new decor, and I heard like what sounded like the theme music to the Olympics. What's going on with that? That's right. In the next few weeks in City Kids, not just a one-time thing, but they have City Kids Olympics. The next several weeks, they have all kinds of fun games, snacks, all kinds of things for the kids, so you don't want to miss out on that. And that's not a one-time thing. That's for the next several Sundays, but we do have a one-time treat today. Kona Ice, out in the parking lot. Go get some. Go enjoy that. We love you guys. Have a great week.